Ozzy, the loggerhead sea turtle, came to us with a significant right front flipper injury. She was with us for nearly two years receiving rehabilitation. So a couple of the things that we look for in an animal when we're hoping to release them is are they feeding themselves, are they capable of getting food on their own, and do they have good range of motion, so are they capable of being mobile out in their natural habitat. So for Ozzy, what we were looking for is did she have good range of motion in her right front flipper, and was she feeding on her own, and in her case she was able to do both of those things. The veterinarian here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium uh, was satisfied with that and asked uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission if we could release her. Typically, uh, they ask us to release the animal where they were initially retrieved from. That way, they're being returned to an environment that they're familiar with. Different animals are released in different locations depending on the species or the size. So for sub-adult to adult loggerheads, um, their typical habitat would be a beach environment. So it, uh, FWC often deems it appropriate for us to release on a beach site, whereas for a juvenile green sea turtle, for example, a more appropriate habitat might be a seagrass bed. So we would release that animal in a nearby park uh, in a local seagrass bed. For smaller individuals like hatchling sea turtles, it's appropriate for us to release them in the Sargassum weed line. It was 94 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico, so we took a boat and released those animals out there because it's the most appropriate habitat for them. So most of the sea turtles that we successfully rehabilitate here at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium receive specific types of tags before they're released, and that's called a flipper tag and a pit tag. Flipper tag simply consists of two metal tags with a specific identification number on it that's applied to the front flippers. And a pit tag is like a microchip, like you might have implanted in your dog or your cat at home. And that also has a specific ID number that's attached to the animal. The reason why we apply those different types of tags is just on the off chance that animal happens to restrand in the future, and Florida Fish and Wildlife can provide them with their previous stranding information, and that might help them with their, the medical treatment that they receive in the future. So a third type of tag that a sea turtle might receive is something called a satellite tag, and that type of tag allows us to track the movements of a sea turtle. Ozzy was a unique turtle in that she was the first rehabilitated sea turtle here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium to receive a satellite tag. My name is Dan Evans and I'm the Technology and Research Specialist for the Sea Turtle Conservancy based out of Gainesville, Florida. I'm here today at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium to attach a satellite transmitter onto Ozzy. A big part of attaching a satellite transmitter is the preparation of the shell. It has to be scrubbed really well, it has to be totally clean, and it also has to be roughed up a little to give the epoxy a surface to attach to. So we sand it, uh, we score it, just to have a nice attachment site for the turtle. Uh, if you don't have a really clean shell, then you're just attaching the epoxy to dirt and grime and uh, the transmitter will come off a lot faster. And then it's a two-part uh, epoxy that is used that's a really low heat epoxy so it doesn't harm the turtle in any way. antenna is here and so that will come out of the water. When she's swimming it gets bent over like that and as soon as she surfaces it pops forward. Uh, these are the extra towers that were installed to try to protect the base of the antenna. Uh, the silver disc here uh, is on the top and then there's two on the sides is the saltwater switch. So when this comes out of the water and is dry that's when the transmitter knows that it's out of the water and starts sending signals. We anticipate that the transmitter will stay on her for up to two years. Depends on the turtle, depends on the environment. Presented by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, whose 35 miles of white sand beaches and world-class art scene landed it on the New York Times list of the world's top places to go. Plan your own adventure at liveamplified.com. When you live amplified in St. Pete Clearwater, you dive deeper into every crazy, cool, connected moment. Come feel the pulse at liveamplified.com.
So release day is a really big event here at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. You can imagine an animal that was with us for nearly two years has garnered plenty of support here at the aquarium. So there were plenty of people there to wish her happy travels on her release day. We released Ozzy um, near Pier 60 in Clearwater, Florida. So something that was really exciting for me was to be able to track Ozzy's movements after we released her. We tracked her over the course of 135 days. She managed to travel over 2,300 miles um, and she ended up making it to the northern coast of North Carolina before her transmission stopped. We don't typically know where their story leads after an animal is released. So Ozzy was really a unique case because in most releases, we simply hope that they're doing well. With Ozzy, we know she made it.